Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. My name is Brink, and I can hardly see you out of this mask. <laughs> Alright, let's get to work guys. Um, I did a lot of work off camera. I actually did it on camera, but I recorded it and it came out too analytical, too complicated. I went step by step explaining every process of this. And I still have it in my hard drive, sort of debating whether to publish it or not. But I'm thinking it's not going to be fun to watch more than putting up an episode that nobody's going to, you know, people will feel bad after watching it. They don't understand it. So I'd rather just go through what I've done so far and explain it. And then there's some other things that we can do on camera. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, that we can do on camera. And I think it will be more entertaining, more more understandable and might be easy on the eyes. Maybe um, it could help some of you that might be doing this. What I want to do is set up a system where I never have to go into the reactor room. It'll auto feed into a chest or maybe just directly into the caches. And then from the caches, go upstairs to get processed. And then after it gets processed, go back into the caches and fill in extra stuff that goes in there. And then from there, Dis with a sensor decide how much of it is needed in the reactor and auto fill the reactor so that I never have to go into this room nor never have to touch anything in here. The way I explained it I talked about every item involved in the production or the automation of the processing of all the things required for the reactor fuel and although some of these things are um, you know, it, they're not really used, some of these things, in the making of MOX fuel. They are needed in one little tiny way or another in the long run. For example, this lead dust. You'd never think you'd need it, but it is part of what needs to be done to process MOX fuel. Uh, it has to be evacuated from the, the, uh, the body of this processing system. And so you can't just, um, just leave it in there in the thermal centrifuge you got to get rid of it uh, now some of the things are redundant like for example i just noticed this plutonium is repeated here this this uh repeat doesn't really matter i'm going to be changing the order of all these things i just recently finished <laughs> doing uh all these things so i still have to clean it up this is still a mess you know i have an extra cache there and this one can be moved over there so yeah, I'll, cl I'll clean it up. These all have filters and priorities. Not all of them, but some of them have priorities. Let's see if we can find one with a priority so I can explain what's going on with it. You can see this has a negative one. What this means is that, yeah, it'll go in here, but it will prefer not to go in here so that it'll stay upstairs in the metal former that produced it. So... It has a little bit of friction. It, it's trying to get down here, but this one doesn't want it, so it stays up there. Now, if the metal former has 64, well, it's got to push out the metal uh, plate somewhere or another, so it forces it here. And this is the only available slot. There is no input on this one. It's, uh, it's just a temporary again, just to explain. So, uh, being forced down, because the metal former upstairs has a full inventory of it, yeah, then it'll go here. Ooh, uh, let's see. Inscriber. Oh, yeah, let me explain how to do this real quick to him. Um, uh, take your stuff out. And let's move it over to there. Let's see, right here. That should work. Hopefully that'll work. <laughs> uh, all right. So back to, uh, let's see, what was I talking about? So the redundancy of the way things are run in there. Uh, two rad suits. Yep. I died plenty. Learned my lesson. Okay, 
So let's go upstairs. Right now, I manually pulled out the dual MOX rods from my reactor, and it should still be processing. Yeah, I'm still doing it. Um, all the energy is going into here, and I don't. Ha I'm not putting out enough power. Uh, let me explain why. I still haven't produced enough MOX rods that I can run one batch while I'm processing another batch. What I pulled out of here <laughs> left this empty. So where am I getting this power that the mass fab is running? Well, from here. Let's go downstairs real quick. And where is it? Yeah, here. So the capacitor bank that was up there is feeding out energy to my teleporter in case I need this teleporter, even though I'm using the portal gun teleporter for the moment. But it's also feeding into this connector. And this feeds a little bit of power to my MFSU, as you can see. So that's where I've been processing my energy. So then if we go upstairs to the top floor, the processing area, we should see that these are processing. Well, these don't have a whole lot of energy. And let's see, what can I cut? Just so we can process this and get some speed going into here. Maybe we can cut a line somewhere. <laughs> Uh, down here would be fine. I don't have my suit on, so I better be careful when I cut this. I have my magnet on, so I should be able to collect this. Good. So none of the power will feed any of the reactors. And let's see. Yeah, the power was going up there. So the mass fab should shut off, which is a big part of my power, my power issues. So now this should start developing power, and there it goes. Okay. So you see that the power is being driven up. Now this, for example... We're going to take an example and see how the process goes. It's going to produce plutonium, tiny plutonium, and some iron dust. It goes automatically down to here and feeds these first. So there's the, the what was it, the iron dust, the tiny, tiny plutonium here, and the regular plutonium here. Now you'll notice that they're zero. All of them are zero. They actually did come down here, but they went right back up again. The iron dust went up and goes directly to the, the furnace. And it produced, there it is, it produces iron ingots. Now, it has an ejector upgrade. So, it will push the result or the output, which is in this box, to any machine next to it that has a viable input that can accept whatever the output is. Keep that in mind. I'm going a little bit extra because there's a reason. In the future, we will need all this information. The only available machine next to it is this one. And it does accept iron as a viable input. So, it, it gets pushed here. Now, it has an ejector upgrade. So, anything in this box will shoot to a machine next to it that has a viable input. Well, this is a machine next to it. But it doesn't have a viable in input. So, that's why I said that before. Those qualifications matter. And so you can't feed iron, uh, what is it producing? Um, iron plates is what it's producing with the rolling. This electric furnace doesn't accept iron plates as an input. So it'll never come here. The next machine with a viable input is here. It will accept iron plates and it's in extruding mode. So it has fuel rods that is being made. Now it has an ejector upgrade again. Any machine next to it that has a viable input, it will push to it. So it'll push to this and this, except that this doesn't have a viable input because a metal former will not accept, what's this called? Fuel rods. Metal formers don't accept fuel rods in an input. So the next viable input, this one, does accept. So here it is. And so this is why I did it this way, because we don't have to go in and out, up and down too many times. Notice that this doesn't have an output on it. This one does, and this one does, but this one doesn't. There's never any need for it, because I want this to get locked up with 64 in here. Once this gets to 64, it will block any input from here being fed into it. Instead, it'll go to the caches downstairs. Now notice that all the caches downstairs are set to input of brown. All of them are brown. So if it finds a cache with a similar item inside, it will flow through. If it doesn't and it tries to get into the wrong place, it will be refused. Because as you know, thermal expansion caches 
only accept one item of a kind. And these are all locked so that they can't move. These items can't be changed. That being the case, the main issue with all of this design was figuring out what needs to come down here to the cache vault and what should be refused and stay upstairs. And so I think I have it in such a, uh, such a way that this works. And as we can see, after it's done here with the MOX nuclear fuel being fed into the canning machine to make fuel rods, it'll go into the crafter, the RF tools crafter, tier three, by the way, because it can do eight recipes. Uh, the crafter tier one does two recipes. The crafter tier two does either four or six. I don't remember, but why not shoot for eight, even though I'm not even using them, but you know, it, it costs nearly the same. So I have all my recipes in here, the things that I think I'll need. I think this is all I need. I, I, I haven't run the system fully. I have run it from start to end, but I'm still manually collecting the items from the finished product over to the reactor. So I can tell you that my system works perfectly. And as you can see, it's calculating stuff. It has nine tiny, but is waiting for the 10th before it'll start crafting this one. The reason is um, I need a placeholder. I have it in such a way that it'll keep one item always in here. So really what's going on is you see nine here, but it's actually eight because it always has to keep one tiny in this box. So uh, when it gets to the 10th, as you saw right there, it crafted another one. And so it, it's got eight now and it keeps doing that until it gets to a full um, all the dual mox rods it can make. Now let's see if we have any already made. We have 15. Awesome. And I think it's still processing. Let's go quickly check it out and then move on to something else because we've spent a lot of time talking about this already. Have we finished? This has finished. I was processing one uranium. You may have seen it a second ago, but notice that we have one MOX nuclear fuel that I would love to use right now, but it's in the placeholder. It's got to have at least one in this box. It can't move because then these uraniums, which we produce a lot of them, will overtake it. <laughs> so it's very important to have a cache downstairs of it. Otherwise, <laughs> um, it'll overtake all of our recipes. So let's grab our mox. And here it is. Um, what is it? Left click, I think, to grab all of them. And it is locked. So it holds the image. And this is the part that I'm still doing manually popping it in there and it auto fills as you can see it replenished it and now we're making 1044 EU per tick again so if we go downstairs I want to show you for those people who haven't seen the input or the power coming from the reactors out of here and Dullminster gave me the tip of uh, using a CF foam in the space for the power also it shields as well but notice that I did leave a sleeve, an access, so that I can put the ex export uh, piping out of this exit chest and import piping into this input chest into the reactor. This is where the reactor was uh, a second ago. We entered the chest here. So from here, we have our caches here. And this is very simple to just wire up. The MOX fuel that we removed, I think it was this one, let's see, dual fuel rod depleted, uranium, this one right here. So I would run an item conduit from here, and it looks like we may need to make a tiny little turn, boop, boop, and then go up. Very simple. Or maybe we'll make the turn out here. This would be easier, actually, if we do the turn right here, straight in. So that is awesome, guys. It's all working. The only issue right now, though, I got to explain something, is that the iron dust that it produces in order to keep the system flowing stably, the iron dust is needed to make iron plates. Iron plates are needed for all of this because it bonds to MOX fuel rods. And when you bond them together with the iron plate, in other words, the crafting recipe is one iron fuel rod, 
iron plate in the middle, another fuel rod next to it, that makes a dual. You need these iron plates then. We don't produce enough iron plates from the amount of iron dust uh, that we get out of thermal centrifuging the depleted rods. So we have to add a little bit of iron, um, iron in any form into this system. Iron is also needed in making the fuel rods themselves. So um, I don't I don't have a, a cache for iron fuel rods, the empty ones, because it'll make 10,000 of them when we need the iron for other things. So my storage is that metal former as I explained earlier. That being the case, not enough iron being produced from what we get, the only thing I'll ever need to do to this whole system of the nuclear reactor is enter a little bit of iron into the system once a week or something like maybe a stack once a week it's not even that much it's like maybe a once a month maybe but i haven't gotten to that point where i can measure exactly how much i need um so we'll get to that but at the moment i haven't needed to enter any extra iron it's been running just fine on its own so we're working just fine guys this has been working perfectly well, I got to dress it up, clean it up, move stuff around, but we're going to leave this for now. What I want to do today for this episode is, I keep thinking back at all the work I did in recording the previous episode and didn't get to publish it. <laughs> oh man, I wish I could have, but I think that explanation was a little bit better than what I did earlier. So we've been collecting UU Matter. Let's take a look at our UU Matter. And I think we have good news today, guys. We have 15,879. We're going to collect a little bit more. I'm going to show you how I've been collecting it. We used the Fluivact, which was a recommendation by Torgal. Uh, we just right-click it a few times, and that removes the stuff inside the mass fabricator. Very simple. You only need to click it a couple of times. So let's put our Fluivact back. And it'll enter, the Fluivac will work by right-clicking and taking the liquid you're pointing to into any reservoir inside your inventory. I had this tank in my inventory, so I put it in here. Now our total is... 17,000. I think this is more than what we needed. It was either 13,000 or 16,000. I don't remember what the calculation turned out to be, but I'm sure we are over. So we have more than we need. We are able to use it. But <laughs> what I want to build using it requires some other things. So we have to get to building the other things. And hopefully we can do it this episode. We'll get it started. I'm going to cut away, get some stuff prepared, and then I'll be right back. Alright guys, I think I'm bringing you back a little bit early, but I wanted to show you some of the progress that I've done because I've been doing a lot of stuff. And all of it has been off camera. And I figure I'll bring you back, do a little something with you. So, I built the three machines that I'm going to need to build the thing I want to build today. Let me just reveal what it is. I don't know if I'll get to finish today, but at least we'll get started. What I want to build is... Uh, let's see, I wrote it down somewhere. 128 iridium. Now, iridium is very difficult to find. Uh, it spawns in loot chests in the uh, runic, runic Dungeon. No, no, not Runic. Yeah, it's Runic Dungeon, isn't it? Let's check. In this dimension, uh, Runic Dungeons is the name. Yes, it is. So we went on a little bit of an adventure with the rest of the guys on the server, a little journey. And I found those iridium in chests. I'm thinking, I wonder who else was able to get some. Because we all just kept looting as we went. And so I got 14, which is great. Um, and I need 128. So I'm thinking... I calculated uh, what I had from what we need, and it turns out I need 13,680 millibuckets of UU matter. We far surpassed that. So what I'm going to do, 
is actually I can take it with me um, we're going to see if we can set up I've been making scenarium down here we're gonna need a lot of it down here so let me just show you real quick yeah it's still making let's see how many I have because I haven't marked down how many I need total we have 128 and for scenarium pieces it says on my paper that we need 144 okay so we're close I don't need to make this whole stack but just in case I miscraft anything ooh miscraft uh, if I craft incorrectly anything I'll have some extras to work with let me let that keep running and instead of connecting these where I want them to connect which will be on the top floor somewhere either here or here this might be better because I only need three spaces one two and three it would fit perfectly the only problem is the wiring I'd have to move a couple of things but it's very doable because there's a catwalk here and I can connect to the wires behind here but if I connected here it would be so much simpler because it's right there mass fab to the replicator scanner and all of that there is another space here but I kind of want some window to be able to look at my island this is where I'm gonna be living in that uh, in that island over there I'm gonna have a lot of um, visual appearances of buildings there so I do need a, a window somewhere on this side so I'll leave this space open we have this place to work with but this is way too big so we have that and that I'm not sure maybe this one anyway uh, so what I'm going to do is instead of running the wires up here for today I'm going to leave them down here and we can place them in any order but let's see if we can get them in some good order I'm going to place a scanner first uh, which one goes next pattern storage you know I think the pattern storage has to be touching one of the blocks and it might be the replicator here but if it isn't it'll be touching the scanner so I think it's safe to put the pattern storage in the middle and we have some space up here don't we uh, let's see if I can get my hover mode on yeah we have some space to run conduit if we need to I don't remember I've done this uh, so long ago I have a tutorial called how to make iridium with a mass fabricator and I went through every step I didn't miss one step everything was on camera so that if you want to know how to do it I won't skip anything everything is in there alright so let's get our iridium now this isn't wired yet so ME glass cable we'll just need one and smackety smack booyah and so this must be powered and it's getting powered the thing is this is chewing up all the power at the moment so maybe we'll stop this for a second let's uh, leave just one to cook when it's done with that one it'll stop I'm sure good it's at 26 percent all right so when that's done these will get more power it's got power but just very little let's get an iridium and once we place this iridium in there we should be careful because well let's put the CD crystal the crystal memory first that goes into the right this will go in and start scanning it'll take to 100% it'll take a real long time here's the problem it needs to destroy one in order to mark down how to build one so just keep in mind you don't want to destroy this CD once you built it you gotta keep it in a safe place because this will get destroyed now I have 14 I have 13 left over so I'm not in dire need here I'm okay but I just wanted to let you know in case you needed it alright so we'll wait for this alright so this is done yep 120 millibuckets is what it says it can do so we'll hit the save and there it's saved into here and you can see that the CD says iridium ore in it and how much millibuckets of UU matter it needs 120 I'm kinda of recalling this kind of differently so let's put this in here and import there it is okay so you we do have to bring the CD in but I think after it's in here we never need the CD again we can store it in a box somewhere and all of our items can be you know we can scan between left and right of all the items we have in storage at any rate it's requesting 120 
and it needs power uh, why doesn't it oh it doesn't get power okay so it's just giving information I guess hmm not sure but at any rate um, we're waiting for what maybe fluid let's get the the tank in there hopefully we don't waste this UU matter you know what instead of taking a chance what I'm gonna do is do this and put a fluid conduit between so that I don't dump all of the fluid in there because I may not want to do that this way I can s sort of just give it a little bit and stop it when I need to export okay so that's sending a little bit oh that's way more than I want to send stop you that is way more I gave it 5,000 okay so this is the residue that's in the the pipe and that'll slow down so we want to continually run but oh here it is there it goes okay so yeah this doesn't need power it just stores like a disk drive all of your items so we can scan left and right from here of all the things that are in the pattern storage and now we can repeat run and there it goes so when this is full of the UU matter and the power that it needs it will create one it doesn't even have enough of the EU that it needs to even do one unfortunately my power is very dry but I think what I'll do is I'll let this run and just fill it up and then just leave this overnight I, I think um, since my episode has to come out for tomorrow I'm going to have to stop here unfortunately I was hoping to get further and actually use this iridium ore the 100 and I think it was 128 iridium uh, to be able to use it for the block that I want to build but I think we're gonna have to stop here guys if you like any part of this episode please give it a like Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all next time.